I made a video a few weeks ago why I'm investing in a bankrupt company. This is one of my best performing videos and I believe it's because many people are interested in investing in bankrupt companies. Hertz gained 1400% in a single week, Whiting Petroleum gained over 1000% in just a couple of months and now Hertz is saying that they are going to issue 1 billion US dollars in shares. There's something wrong in all of this. Because most of the time, when you are investing in a bankrupt company, it should not end well. Companies go bankrupt for a reason, because of poor performance. So when a company is going bankrupt, most of the time, it's a bad investment. But now we are saying that investing in bankrupt companies is a good idea. And those companies also, they want to issue shares since people are buying the shares. So should we keep investing in bankrupt companies because I told you in that video it is a good idea if you know what you are doing. In this video we are going to see how to invest in bankrupt companies, when to invest in them, why to invest in them and when not to invest in them. To prevent this channel from going bankrupt, please smash the like button for the algorithm. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ishvak. I am a popular investor on eToro, where I manage assets for over 110 people. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the coming videos. Sometimes investing in a bankrupt company can give you the opportunity of a lifetime. For example, if you had invested 10,000 US dollars in American Airlines when it filed for bankruptcy in 2012, if you had invested in November 2012, you would have made 1.6 million US dollars in just five years. This is an investment for a lifetime. You only need one such big investment in your life and you would have made a fortune. But you would not have known that this would happen. And that doesn't mean that investing in any bankrupt company will give you the same result. Because most of the time when you're investing in a bankrupt company, you will never get your money back. You look at people who invested in Lehman Brothers, they will never get their money back. The company was liquidated. There are two types of bankruptcies, Chapter 7 and Chapter 11. Chapter 7 bankruptcy is when the company is liquidated. And Chapter 11 it goes through a debt restructuring. Let's talk about chapter seven, liquidation. When the company is liquidated, most of the time, this is a very bad investment to make because the company has more debt than asset. So it is liquidated and all the assets will be sold to repay the debt. So if you own the company, you will get paid nothing. But now if the company goes through a chapter 11 bankruptcy, it will have two possible scenarios. Number one, it merges with another company. This is what happened with American Airlines. The company in 2012, after it filed bankruptcy, after a few years, it merged with the United Airways. And that's how it came out of bankruptcy. So if you had invested in American Airlines at the time, you would not have known that this would have happened. So investing in a bankrupt company, waiting for a merger can be a good thing, but you have to hope that the merger will come. There is no certainty on that. The third scenario that can happen, and it is for chapter 11 bankruptcy, is that the company has a debt restructuring. They will negotiate with their bondholders, with their creditors, and tell the creditors that the debt will be restructured. So let's say instead of paying the debt in cash, they will give the creditors some equity. This is what I like the most. And this is when most of the time you can make good money on such bankruptcies. Let's take for example, Whiting Petroleum. This is the company which I was interested in investing in. This is an oil company it filed for bankruptcy a few months ago and it already negotiated with the bondholders and it said that it's going to give them 97% of the equity to them. So if you own the company today, you are a shareholder, you will own only 3% of the company after the restructuring. So let's say you buy 10% of the company today after the restructuring, you will own about 0.1%. So it is a bad thing for the current shareholders. You don't want to own such a company and you don't want to buy the stock. But now you need to consider something. You need to look at the tangible book value of the company, the liquidation price of the company. If you sell all these assets and the assets are going to be used to repay the debt, how much money is left? This is the liquidation price of the company. And when we look at Whiting Petroleum, after we have considered all the debt restructuring, we can see that buying this company today is at a lower price than its uh, tangible book value, than its liquidation price. So if you're buying the company today, 
it means you can make a profit if the company is liquidated when i'm talking about today it's actually my thinking a month ago not not actually today because if you ask me today the company is expensive so that's why i decided that maybe it would have been a good investment to invest in that company and then i took a big margin of safety because whenever you're investing in a company you need a margin of safety in case the stock price keeps going down in that case, it should have been big because the company filed for bankruptcy it can go to zero. So I took a 50% margin of safety. So far, this was a good investment, but it was not cheap enough for me to invest. So I was waiting for the stock price to drop for me to make an investment. Unfortunately, this did not happen. The stock price went up and it gained 1,100% in only a few weeks. Will the stock price fall again to that price where I want to buy? I don't know, but I hope so. And if it falls, of course, I'm going to buy because I'm still betting on the future of the company. It is still a good investment, a good company in my opinion, but only at the right price. That doesn't mean because it gained 1000% in a couple of weeks that I need to invest in that company because I expect it to gain 1000% again. This is speculation. This is not investing. There's another reason why I wanted to invest in Whiting Petroleum. It has to do with the uh, the correlation of the stock with oil prices because the stock is highly correlated with oil prices if oil prices in the future are going to rise the stock price will also rise and this is a catalyst for the stock price and the second reason why i wanted to invest in that company unfortunately i could not invest and if you ask me to do i regret not investing actually not because i made my calculations if i had invested it would have been because of my calculations now the stock price went up if you invested in that company congratulations to you but it's only because you got lucky it's just pure speculation there is no fundamental that moved the stock price another better way to invest in whiting petroleum is instead of buying the stocks to buy the unsecured notes this is something that some people talk to me about it's very interesting actually the returns can be much bigger than with the stocks but in order for you to do that, you need to understand very well how all these unsecured bonds work. I have talked about uh, most of these things on my analysis of Whiting Petroleum. I made an analysis about the debt restructuring. You can find everything on my research partnership. And by the way, now I have one month free trial. You can also join me on Discord if you like. I'll put the link. Everything will be in the description. You need to only make investments, which is in your circle of competence. If they are outside your circle of competence, you should not be investing. It will be just a speculating. You are investing because you expect someone else to buy at a higher price. And this is not a good reason to buy. You don't buy because you expect someone else to buy at a higher price. You buy because you expect that the company will do better in the future and you believe in the company. Because when you own a share of the company, you are an owner of a company. You should act like one. Now let's talk about Hertz. Hertz filed for bankruptcy and immediately Carl Icahn sold all his shares at a $2 billion loss. But he said that he still believed in the company. And that's something very interesting. He believes in the company, but he sold the shares. Why did he do that? I made a video about that. You can watch it. And if you think about it, it's because he won't be making any profits on that investment anytime soon. Because he bought at such a high price. Now the price will go to zero. He sold everything. He used to own 40% of the company. Let's say after the debt restructuring, he owns only 0.4% of the company. He would need to wait decades to break even on such an investment. And it's not a good idea for him to wait. It's better to just accept that you made a mistake and move on. That's why he did that. But what about us? Carl Icahn bought at a very expensive price. But when we look at Hertz today, the stock price is cheap. So should we buy? Well, some people has been buying and in just one week, the stock price gained 1,400%. This is a massive gain. If you had invested $10,000, you would have made over $150,000. This is a great return on your investment in just one week. But again, you would not have known that this would have happened. There are some reasons why this happened. Some people are blaming uh, the Robin Hood investor, those millennials which have been investing. Maybe it's because of them, because uh, there are many millennials who have been investing for the first time ever after this lockdown. So maybe these people are day trading and they're trying new things and that's why they send the stock price up. But maybe it's not just them. Maybe there are institutional investors also doing the same thing because there are a lot of algorithmic trading going on. When those algorithms see that the a certain stock is volatile, maybe they're going to add a lot of money to that stock because I don't believe that 
only those Robin Hood investors move the stock price of a uh, hurt so much. I don't think it is only them. Because these people don't know much about investing. Actually, there's one very tragic story I recently read that one Robin Hood investor, he committed suicide because he thought he lost a lot of money, but actually it was not even a real loss. He was trading options. But that's why I tell you, only do things which is within your circle of competence. I'm not telling you that you're going to commit suicide. I hope not. But uh, you need to do things which are within your circle of competence. Don't try things that you don't know about. And investing in bankrupt companies is something very hard, especially when it comes to hurts. Because you need to understand something. When I was willing to invest in Whiting Petroleum, it's because the company already told us. On the day that they filed for bankruptcy itself, they told everybody, it was in that filing, how much they are willing to give to the shareholders, how much they are willing to give to the bondholders. They already negotiated with the creditor, with the bondholder, with the shareholders. So everybody already knew what was going to happen. They already had a plan how to get out of bankruptcy. They said it was going to take five months. So they had a plan how to do it. But as far as Hertz is concerned, they just file for bankruptcy. They don't have any plan at all. So why would you invest in that? If you invest in Hertz today, it will just be speculation. It will be gambling. And now the company took the decision that they will create more shares. So if the shares are going to zero, why are they creating more shares? They will create shares to raise capital. The SEC is investigating. But let's say they are able to issue those shares. You own the shares now, you bought them, the company now has some cash, it's good for them. But then again, they have filed for bankruptcy. And when they will need to repay their debt, they will need to create even more shares. And they create those shares, they won't sell it to you. They will give it as a gift to the bondholders. As a gift because they are going to handle the debt also. So you, as a shareholder, if you bought those shares, the value of the shares will go down because more shares were created. So it makes no sense for you to be happy that they are issuing shares. And if you think about it, the market cap of the company is less than $1 billion and they are going to issue $1 billion in shares. So they are going to more than triple the number of shares. And that's only before the debt restructuring. So you see, investing in Hertz today, that's a very, very bad idea. If you're investing, that's not investing, that's speculating, that's gambling. Another example I can give you is Chesapeake Energy. This is an oil and gas company, mostly a gas company. So the company say that most probably they are going to file for bankruptcy soon. But the stock price is going up. People are buying the stock. I don't know why. They are buying the stock. Maybe they expect it to go even higher. They expect someone to buy even at a higher price. Again, it's the same situation as Hertz. They are planning to file for bankruptcy. Let's say they file for bankruptcy. The stock price will crash because whenever the stock files for bankruptcy, immediately it crashes. And then they don't have any plan yet how they are going to get out of that bankruptcy. Only once a company has a plan, then you may consider making an investment. You look at the plan, you see how much are you going to get, you make calculations, you see the real intrinsic value of the company, if there is any catalyst that can take the company out of bankruptcy in the future. Because if you're investing in the company, you expect them to do better in the future. It's not just because you expect the stock price to randomly go up. It needs a catalyst that will propel it up. After you have made all these calculations, now you have the intrinsic value of the company, you take a large margin of safety because this is still dangerous and then only if it is still cheap, you invest. And I would advise you to put a lot of your portfolio in that, maybe only 1%, 2% of your portfolio. Astronaut Frank Bowman said that capitalism without bankruptcy is like Christianity without hell. So a company transfer bankruptcy because of poor performance. Never you will see a good company filing for bankruptcy. There are times in history, for example, when Texaco filed for bankruptcy, when Carl Icahn invested then, I think it was 1988, it was a, a technical bankruptcy. But still, it was not really such a good performing uh, company. But uh, Carl Icahn found out that it was a technical bankruptcy and he invested. But it was something that he understood. It was in his circle of competence. Even Warren Buffett has invested in bankrupt companies in the past. There are so many investors, great investors, who did such type of deals. But it may not be something easy for the retail investor. Even for me, investing in a bankrupt company, it is not something easy. 
Even I'm managing assets for other people, that doesn't mean that I'm an expert on investing in backdrop companies. This is something hard. And that's why on Whiting Petroleum, I had to take such a big margin of safety. So you only do things which are within your circle of competence. It's not just for investing in bankrupt companies, it's for any investment. Don't go beyond your circle of competence. So let me know in the comments whether you have any bankrupt companies in your portfolio. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and share. Please watch these two videos here if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.